welcome to City View Church Online. We're so glad you joined us today for this online experience. We hope you will be blessed by today's service. For those of you who are new to City View, we like to start each service with a time of worship, followed by a message of encouragement from our pastor. Before we get into the service, though, I just wanted to remind you of how much we like to see your comments on our videos, so keep them coming and definitely follow us on social media. As well, if you haven't had the chance, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and definitely ring the bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. I would now like to invite Dallas to start off our service with a time of worship. Well, hello, everybody. It's so good to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Donovan, for the introduction. We're just excited to give God as much praise and worship as we can, and we believe that that's an important part of our services, and so just want to welcome you to join us. There'll be words on the screen, and uh, you know, we just want to give God all the glory as much as we can every day for the things we're thankful for and the things that we want to just praise Him for. So let's sing today. My son James and my wife Portia, they're here as well. Um, who knows? He might run in the screen. We'll see, but uh, just want to give God our praise today. Amen. Cause I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley and yes i will bless your name and yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days yes i will And then again, I count on Cause I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God that's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out and yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. And yes, I will bless your name. And yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. And yes, I will for all my days. And yes, I will. And I choose to praise, to glorify, to glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against, I choose to praise, to glorify, to glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against, I choose to praise. Glorify to glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify to glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, and yes, I will. Bless your name, and yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. We give him praise every day, amen. We're just so thankful that we can do that. It's because of the love of Christ and the love of God that we're able to sing those words. 
And had it not been for the fact that he came after us when we had fallen off, and we wouldn't be able to sing those words. And this next song just talks about talks about the reckless love of God. Talks about how he chases us no matter where we're at. How he's there with us every second of every day, even when we might be ignoring him, even when we might be doing the opposite of what he told us to do, he's there. And as we sing this song, I just encourage you to think about where you were, maybe where you are, and God meets you there. He comes after you, he loves you wants to be with you. Before I spoke a word, you are singing over me. been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming never ends reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending Reckless love of God. Let's sing when I was your foe. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, me. Cause all oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. Oh, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, let's sing it again. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's 
no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me, all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, cause I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. Oh. Cause all oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I surrender. Drench my soul. Drench my soul. As mercy and grace unfold, a hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry, speak to me now. Lord, speak to me now, cause I surrender, and I surrender, and I want to know you more, I want to know you more, I surrender. And I surrender, cause I want to know you more. I 
want to know you more. We want to know him more, amen? Especially now. We want to feel him close. And he's there. there with us every day. Won't let you sing that. Like a rushing wind. Like a rushing wind. Jesus, bring with me. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me. Like a within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In there. Come on, sing it again like that. Like a rushing wind, Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Some of you will for sure know this one. We were just singing about how we surrender. There was an old hymn about that as well. The words are pretty simple in the chorus. Just, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I'm just going to sing that out. Let me just sing a few verses, but... Let's just give it all to Him. This isn't just talking about how much we surrender, maybe our our souls or our lives or something like that. This isn't just talking about eternity. This is talking about everyday life. This is talking about all the things that He's asked us to give to Him. For the Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for He cares about you. He cares about everything we're going through right now. 
He cares about this virus and how it's affecting us. He wants to see everyone healthy and whole and healed. But we have to let him be a part of our lives in order to do that. So let's just give it all to him today. Let's just surrender everything that might be plaguing us today. Might be holding us down financially, spiritually, physically, marriage-wise. Let's just give it all to him today, man, as we sing this hymn. No oil to Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give, and I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Sing this chorus out, I surrender all. Because I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee. And all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Let's just sing verse 4 as well. And all to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. And fill me with Thy love. And power, let thy blessing fall on me. Here we go. Cause I surrender all, and I surrender all, and all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Sing that last line again. Cause I surrender all. And I surrender all. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing and your favor. We thank you for your worship and, and your presence in our lives, for the Holy Spirit and everything that you're there for us in every situation. Lord, we sing about you. We sing about you in the low times and the good times. We sing about you because you chased after us. We surrender all. In Jesus' name, bless today and bless this service and bless us all as we go about our days. In Jesus' name. Thanks so much, Dallas. It is always a blessing to spend some time in worship. Each week, we look forward to speaking out our monthly confession as a church. And this week, we have the pleasure of Norma doing the confession reading. The words will be on the bottom of your screen to follow along with. And after today's confession, we'll have Pastor Keith with his special word of encouragement. I am God's child because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. I daily bring all my burdens to Jesus because he cares for me. He always watches over me to make my path straight and my burdens light. By trusting in him, I am able to enter a supernatural place of rest and peace in my life. I praise God for his abundant love. Well, thank you again for uh, joining us today for our service. There's a word that's often used and it has a very different meaning. We use it quite often, but in the Bible, the definition or the meaning of it is a little bit different. The word that we use is the word hope. And uh, an example of how we would use it quite often is like, I hope it doesn't rain today, or perhaps uh, I hope I win the lottery. But the question is, how do you interpret this statement? Uh, when you think about it, well, it might rain and it might not rain or I don't really know if it will rain and maybe I'll win the lottery but probably not and uh, who really knows and so the word hope gets used in 
very doubtful, very uncertain, and maybe not even hopeful circumstances. But the Bible definition of hope is very different. In the Bible, the word hope says this. The definition for hope is a favorable and confident expectation. Think about that. A favorable, that means it's positive, and confident means it's going to happen, and then there's an expectation. Now, something that you already have, you don't need an expectation for because you've already got it. And uh, confident means that it's something that you're quite certain you can count on that thing. So think about that. Now, the, the, over the last few months as we've been dealing with this whole virus situation that's going around, it, it's really nothing like anything we've ever seen before. And what I've noticed, especially recently, is there's so many different opinions. Everywhere you go, there's an opinion. Everybody has an idea as to how it should have been handled and, and what should have taken place and, and, and how we should go forward even. They're starting to open things up and, and everybody has their ideas to what that should look like and how we should do it and how we should roll things out. But you know what? It's There are so many things that are so uncertain. You know, and I think of... I think of my friend who called, and he, he's in a, an extended care facility. He can't go out. He's there. They're looking out for the best interests, but he is just so lonely, and he wants to see his wife, and no one can come and see him. He can't go and see them. They won't let him out. You know, he's limited to one visit a week, and it's just so sad. And you know what? Here's the thing. He needed some hope. But not the kind of hope that, that you get from, I hope I win the lottery. Not that kind of hope. He needs some hope, something he can come, count on, something that he knows is a favorable and confident expectation. And you know what? One thing I do know about him is he puts his hope in God. Now, uh, here's the key. The key is that we have a choice who we can listen to, and we have a choice in what we will believe. Will we believe the positive things? Will we believe the mixed messages that are coming? Will we believe the negative things? Will we, will, will we buy into all the confusion that's happening out there? I don't think so. At the end of the day, people need hope, the Bible kind of hope. They need a confident expectation that something favorable is going to happen in their life. Now, here's the thing. Our situation is very similar to a situation that uh, Jesus was facing with his disciples. The disciples at the time that they lived, they were facing strong governmental control. In fact, in their case, it was a military con control. It was like a dictatorship with Caesar in charge. And they had many limitations and strict rules about the things that they were al allowed to do. And they had so many unanswered questions. And then Jesus came as a savior, as a king, as a leader, as a miracle worker in their situation. And they wanted to see things change. They were looking to Jesus for the answers. But Jesus' purpose was so much higher than just answering their questions while he was here on the earth. And that's why he gave his life. That's why he died on Calvary. That's why he, he gave up willingly his life so that we could be born again and so that he could pay the price for our sins. He was really the Savior of the world. Now, Easter Sunday, just a few weeks ago, Jesus rose from the grave and he appeared to many people. And, you know, I'm sure the disciples were saying, well, maybe now, maybe now Jesus has the answers. Maybe this will be the time that he will, you know, come back and be our king and set up his rulership in the earth. And so for the next 40 days, Jesus walked on the earth and confirmed many of the things that he had said, building hope within his followers, giving them hope. But then we find in Luke 24, where Jesus was giving them some final, kind of final instructions here. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. And uh, it goes like this, Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. Then he said to them, Don't you remember the words that I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you that everything written about me would be fulfilled, including all the prophecies from the law of Moses through the Psalms and the writings of the prophets that they would all find their fulfillment. In other words, he was saying, hey, I am here to prove that all these things have been fulfilled, all the things that were written. And then he supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scriptures. And then he said to them, everything that has happened fulfills what was prophesied of me, Christ 
the Messiah, was destined to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Okay, so he's saying here to them, he's saying that everything that happened was a fulfillment of prophecy. And I, I don't know exactly how, how he did this, but it was, like, it was like all the lights went on for the disciples. All of a sudden, all those prophecies, all those scriptures, it all came together and they said, yes, yes, we believe that you are the fulfillment of those scriptures. And now he gives them some specific instructions. Pick it up in verse 47. Now you must go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn to me. Start right here in Jerusalem, for you are my witnesses and have seen for yourselves all that has transpired. And I will send the fulfillment of the Father's promise to you. So stay here in the city until the mighty power of heaven falls upon you and wraps around you. Now they go on a small hike to a place called Bethany. Now Bethany would be about, it's about two miles east of Jerusalem. It's actually kind of like down a hill, there's a little valley in between. And I've never been there myself, but I've seen pictures of it. And uh, you can see from, from Bethany, which is, we know it as the Mount of Olives. From the Mount of Olives, you can kind of see across the valley and see the city of Jerusalem off in the distance. And so here's what happened. Then we pick it up again in verse 50. Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands over them, and he blessed them in his love. And while he was still speaking out words of love and blessing, he floated off the, sky, the ground into the sky, ascending into heaven before their very eyes. And all they could do was worship him. Overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy, they made their way back to Jerusalem. And every day they went to the temple praising and worshiping God. So here's the question. Why were they so ecstatic? Why were they so overwhelmed with joy because of this? He, he was just taken from the midst of them. They were standing on the hilltop and he's caught up. And, but here's the reason that they were excited. Here's the reason why they had an overwhelming, ecstatic joy. It was because Jesus gave them a Bible kind of hope. He gave them hope that was a favorable and confident expectation of things that were to come. A hope that soon things would change. A hope that a supernatural power from heaven would come. The promise of God's Holy Spirit. Now, there were approximately 120 followers that took Jesus' instructions, and his mother was included in that, Mary, and they waited in Jerusalem for the next 10 days. Now, they didn't know it would be 10 days. They didn't know how long they would stay there. They just knew his instructions were to stay. And in a sense, they were kind of in a sort of a self-isolation too. They found themselves in the, in the upper room in, in Jerusalem. And wherever they were gathered together, they were praying and anticipating and expecting a breakthrough. Praying and waiting for what would be next. I believe God is speaking to us right now. We've been told to wait, we've been told by the authorities to wait for things. And are we losing hope? You know what, like the disciples, we don't really know the exact timing. But do we have a favorable and confident expectation? I do. And it's because our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in what He did. Our hope is not in, in the, the circumstances around us. Our hope is not in the, the, the medical people or the government or any of those things. When we put our hope and our trust in God, He never, ever, ever fails us. So the question today is, what are you expecting? Where are you putting your hope today? What are you speaking out of your mouth? Are you speaking that things are going to get worse? Or are you speaking and declaring and, in a sense, prophesying, speaking forth what you want to happen in your life? Or are you speaking that good things are going to come? Where is your confidence today? Philippians 4 and verses 4 to 9 says this. And it's a familiar passage of Scripture. I'll read it in the New International. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, 
by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. God wants to fill us all with peace. He wants to fill us with a peace for what we're going through. We don't have the answers, but we do know where our hope is. Our hope is in Jesus. Jesus paid the price for you, and He paid the price for me. And that's where we need to put our hope. Now, forget the virus for a minute and think about this. Where do you need hope in your life? Are you facing situations where you need some hope, where you need some breakthrough, where you need some answers? What's your hope for today? What is your hope for the future? Romans 15 and 13 in the New Living Translation says this, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. That confident hope that comes because your trust is in Him. Your trust is in Jesus. When you put your trust in Jesus, He'll fill you with peace, He'll fill you with hope, and He'll fill you with joy. You'll be excited about what's coming, not discouraged, not giving up hope, but looking to God and looking to Jesus to fill you with hope. I remember a song that Andre Crouch used to sing years ago, and it said this. It said, I've got confidence God is going to see me through. And, you know, an awesome song because it said, no matter what the circumstances are, our confidence and our hope is in God that He is going to see us through everything that we're facing. God wants to fill you with hope today. And no matter what you are facing, and I know, just thinking, Just thinking, I know what some people are facing in our church right now. Has nothing to do with COVID. Has nothing to do with the virus. But I know what they're facing. But you know what? Jesus is their hope. God's hope in our lives is a favorable and confident expectation. He is there for us. He will sustain us, carry us through. So the word to you today is, don't put your hope in uncertain sources. And don't accept the typical maybe kind of hope. This is not about the lottery. This is about Jesus, who gave his life for every one of us, so that we can have hope. Lock in on the sure and true hope that comes from having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you have Jesus as your Savior today? Do you have that hope? I want to just pray for you. Father God, I want to pray for every person that's facing things today, no matter what it is. Lord, just fill them where they are in their living rooms, in their family rooms, in their houses, and wherever they might be watching this, Lord, fill them with Let that peace that surpasses all understanding just keep their hearts and their minds secure in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for that hope. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Grab a hold of that hope today. God is there for you. He sent Jesus to be the source for you And he's provided his Holy Spirit to be your comforter, your peace, and your encouragement. And he has promised to see you through your current situation. Amen. Thanks, Pastor, for that special message of hope. 
We had a very special couple, Jackson and Kayla, get married this week. And while we were waiting at the church to surprise them and do some social distance celebration, Pastors Keith and Jean recorded a quick message and a prayer for us. Sorry it was super windy that day, so the sound's a little bit off, but I hope you enjoy it. Well, as we finish up our service today, uh, we're out here. We've got a, well, yeah, an exciting, yeah, exciting, a, exciting yeah, thing actually. going on here. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, people are behind us, but uh, Saturday, Jackson and Kayla got married, and we're so happy for them. We sent out big Callahan, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. So big congratulations to them, and we're celebrating as a church with them. But we just want to finish up and, uh, you know, just to reflect on the, the worship and then the, and then the message. I, I got a little choked up today because it just when I think of the people, when I think of all the people and the things that they're going through, there's so many things that people are facing that have nothing to do with COVID-19, and yet they need our love, they need our support, and we just want to be an encouragement to them. And do you have anything to share? I used to be watching for people as you're out and about. Um, you can usually tell. If someone's doing good, you can tell. And if they're not, just give them a smile, even just a wave, something to let them know that, that you care. And, and obviously, if you have an opportunity to talk to someone, you can still stand back, but you can definitely talk to them and share Jesus and share that he loves them and that they're not alone. They're not going through this alone. Amen. 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 And you know what? We just want to finish with this. You know, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, it's so easy to accept him and to accept the love that he has for you. And and you'll have that hope that we talked about earlier. So, you know what? If you've never received Jesus, we just want to pray a simple prayer with you today. And so just uh, follow after me and maybe just repeat after me as I pray. Father God, Father God I come to you today. Come to you today. And I know I need help. And I know I need I know I need a savior. And so today I accept what Jesus did. Today I accept what Jesus did. When he died on the cross for me. When he died on the cross for me. And I accept that my sins are forgiven. I accept that my sins are forgiven. And my life is made new. And my life is made new. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, please, please uh, get in touch with, uh, with us. We have resources for you, and, and we want to support you. We want to encourage you in this new walk. You, too, can have that hope that we have in Jesus. Amen. 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 And I just want to uh, give a shout out to all those that continue to support the ministry of City View. We are so thankful to you. We're so thankful for your donations and your offerings offerings and we just love you and we appreciate all that you're doing to help us through this time. We're believing God for good things going forward. We're believing that soon we'll be able to meet together and we'll be able to just continue to do the work that God has called us to in this city. So thank you again for today and yes. we speak blessing over your lives. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the beautiful sunshine yes. and just enjoy each other and just remember that if you don't have a church home, we would be so happy to have yes. you join us here at City Absolutely. Youth. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching this week's service. What a great message of hope. For those of you who are able to support the work we're doing here at City View with your tithes and offerings, we just wanted to say another big thank you. We know in this time of change how tough it can be financially and emotionally, but I believe that God's got good things planned for you. I know that if we are faithful with our giving, that God is faithful, faithful to do good work in us. We hope to hear many testimonies of God's abundance in your lives. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with the pastors of the day, we encourage you to please reach out and contact us. Just a simple comment in our posts or an email will do and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we can. Congratulations and welcome to the family. Next week we hope to have a few more amazing photos and videos of the special couple on their big day as well. Dallas and the worship team have some awesome songs planned for us next week. If you haven't done so already make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash that like button and ring the bell so you get reminded every time we make a new post. Also your comments go a long way in helping us connect with you and get better at what we're doing here at City View. We hope you have a very blessed week, 
See you next time for City View Church Online. Yes, I will bless your name. And yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will. For